I said, I have the, uh, the incredible opportunity to go and spend the uh, Holy Week with uh, persecuted Christians in their bill in, in Iraq, where uh, right now is about 90% of, uh, of Christians because of the displacement from the war. And when Father asked me to, um, to uh, give this presentation, it was uh, actually a, a, a favor he did to me because he forced me to put all those these experiences in order because the experience had been so intense that in order to uh, to share it somehow it requires some order and some context so that's what I've tried to do uh, most of the uh, almost all of the pictures that you 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 will see when I uh, uh, describe the situation were taken by me either the pictures or the or the or the videos so. Um, I, I just want to, to make sure that you are well contextualized uh, about what is happening to our brothers and sisters uh, there to, to uh, understand better, to love our church better, to love our uh, today's martyrs and, uh, and, uh, and witness of the faith better, and to see how we can help them better as well. So uh, just to... Uh, to uh, put us in context, I, I want to uh, show you the map of the area that we're basically talking, is, is Iraq, but also uh, Christians in, uh, in all these, uh, this region. Um, these are called uh, Assyrian Christians, and in the past was, was uh, called the uh, Church of the East, uh, something that we have a hard time imagining that it's mostly because of ignorance, we don't know that for a thousand years, from the year 400 to the, to the 1400, this was where the vast majority of Catholics were in the planet. So for a thousand years, this was an incredibly thriving church. Uh, most of the, uh, of the, of the uh, culture and, and education of a church came from this area. Uh, this, uh, this is an area in which we have the uh, Chaldean Catholics, or the, what is called the Chaldean Church, the Syriac, or the Church of the East, the ones that, that became uh, Nestorian after the, the heresy of, of, uh, of uh, Nestorius, uh, but that in uh, daily life were very difficult to distinguish from the, the Chaldeans, and that's the case e even now, which had an incredibly evangelizing power. Uh, this Christian community here had reached Sri Lanka, and I remember you were reminding where Sri Lanka is, is that island in the southeast of India. They have reached China and Sri Lanka and create Christian communities. They have translated the, the, the main uh, uh, um, the, the main Buddhist books into, uh, into Chinese uh, uh, so that they could be uh, taken to other places. And th there is a theory that says that probably the Zen, Zen Buddhism, which is a Japanese Buddhism, has so many uh, Christian-like concepts, because the monks that translated some of the books maybe kind of infiltrated Catholic <laughs> concepts. And it, you know, and so these guys have reached Sri Lanka and China before faith has reached Ireland. And so just to give you an idea of the power, intensity, and size of this church. Um, it would deserve a whole, a whole, um, um, a whole, conference and even more just to explain the dimensions of this church and how old they are. Uh, just to give you an idea, I'm going to talk about the city of Erbil, uh, also known as Irbil, Arbil, uh, which is one of the oldest populated cities in the history of humanity next to Damascus. And this was a Catholic bishopric, so a diocese, the equivalent to a diocese, by the year 600. So. These are not convert Christians for them. We are by far the newbies, you know, the recently converted. We just, we're just 500 year old, that's a baby for, for their, 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 their story. 
And for those who want to learn a little bit more about this Christianity, is uh, uh, I recommend this book that has been written by, by Philip Jenkins, a known uh, uh, sociologist. He is not a Catholic, so he downplays the importance of, uh, of the importance of the, the see of Peter in his approach, but otherwise provides an incredible, incredible uh, account of that Christianity that has that has not been uh, a well known by by us uh, in uh, in the West. So. Going back to the map, I, I just uh, want to show you that the, 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 the area that has been shadowed is the area in which the, uh, the Assyrian Christians uh, live. So it's this area shared by uh, Syria, southern Turkey, northern and central Iraq, and the uh, west of, uh, of, of Iran. And uh, that has been the, the, the uh, geographic area in which they have lived for uh, uh, from the first century, and uh, they have been uh, displaced and moved or persecuted, but still remain in this area. The um, in this map uh, we can see in red the area in which the uh, the uh, Islamic State. Uh, from now on, we will, uh, we will call it uh, Daesh, the name that uh, the, the Christian community used to refer to them. And, uh, so uh, these are the areas in which the Daesh have been moving, displacing Christians from the, the cities that were probably the most important. I, I was supposed to have a pointer, but I forgot. So it's basically Mosul which is the old diocese of Nineveh. You probably know that when you study the, the history of the Mesopotamian Empire. Tikri and Samarra, which were in, in different moments of history, the sea of the local, uh, of the local uh, patriarch. And now the sea of the, of the, of the patriarch of the, of the Church of the East, the, 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 the Surian Brothers, is in Chicago, Illinois, because they just cannot find a place in the Middle East in which they can settle uh, their, uh, 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 and put their patron to, 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 uh, to uh, govern their church. And I want to pay attention, I want you to pay attention to this area because this is where the Christians are right now. This is the, the, what is called the Iraqi Kurdistan. It's an autonomous region probably the only one that got something out of the, the, the in, in invasion of Iraq. They, they were the ones that acquired autonomy, uh, an army, uh, an autonomous army, and because they have this, this army known as the Pashtaran, which in Kurdish means those who face death, because of that army and how well organized they are, is that Christians are protected. Because Christians are what I say, what I call you in Erbil, and, uh, and they were displaced from Mosul. Uh, as you will see in the, in, in, uh, in the next map, the distance between both of them is not, is not great. So they are very close to the danger they are, they are fleeing from. So this is a better map of the, uh, of the uh, Kurdistan. You can see back that here, and uh, um, the most important thing that I, will, uh, I want you to remember is first, Arbil, Erbil, Irbil, or Eirbil, depending on which of the predominant languages that overlap in this area, and Dohuk, right up the north. It's, that is the corridor in which about 90% of Christians of Iraq are living right now. The other 10% are in Baghdad. All the rest have been displaced for the, from the near, uh, nearby uh, region. Uh, the head of the, of the Catholic Church there, of the Chaldean Church, is uh, Cardinal Rafael Luis Sacco. He's a cardinal and he's also a patriarch, patriarch of the Chaldean. And uh, the head of, of the, the Church of the East, or the Syrian Church, is uh, a patriarch Adai II. The consequence of the, uh, 
of the attack on, on, on Christians and the violence is the displacement of that, uh, that I, I, I draw here. The ones that were in, uh, in uh, south of Turkey and north of uh, Syria they moved to Jordan and to Lebanon right now. And the ones that were in all this northern area of, uh, of uh, Iraq moved to Erbil. If you see Mosul and Erbil, and you keep in mind that we're talking, this is 100 miles, the distance between Mosul and Erbil, Mosul where, where right now the, the Daesh is ruling, is 50 kilometers, that's, that's 30 miles away from, uh, from uh, and the only thing that keep the Daesh apart from killing those Christians are the Pashtaran, is a, is a, is a Kurdish army, and uh, the support that the Western nations are providing to that to their army. Um, what is the reason of this displacement? Um, about 10% of the population that is in, in Erbil and the Hook, in the corridor of Erbil and the Hook, eh, only 10% has been displaced by direct confrontation with Daesh, with, the, with ISIS. Only 10%. Eh, I found few of those families. This is the family of, of Christine. Eh, you can see the crutches right behind the picture. Uh, when uh, her family was trying to, 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 to leave, uh, they got shot by AK-47s from, the, from uh, the Daesh, and one bullet hit her in the, in the back, and she, is in, uh, she may uh, become paralyzed. Uh, uh, the, the, uh, she needs a kind of treatment that uh, is not available. Uh, where she is right now. But the other 90% were, were moved, and that's the most dramatic part, by their fellow Muslims, their neighbors. 90% were moved by their neighbors. Neighbors with which they have been living for 10, 20, 30 years. Because uh, social mobility in, uh, in, uh, in those communities is not expressed by you moving to another uh, uh, neighborhood. It's basically building better your own house where you have your property, and that property is inherited from generation to generation. So uh, their neighbors, with which they will celebrate in weddings and birthdays and so forth, when when the Daesh was here, turned around against those Christians and told them, "You become a Muslim, or you 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 die, or you leave right now and leave us all of our uh, all of your possessions." And when they try to flee in their cars, they say, no, 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 that's including the cars. Mm -hmm. So you have families with toddlers, with babies, walking for five days, eh, trying to reach the safe haven of, of uh, Kurdistan. And the way that the Christians eh, were marked was by this, uh, this uh, letter. This is the, uh, this is the, the elegant uh, shape of the letter in Arabic, Nun. Uh, the letter N for Nazareans, uh, which is the name which uh, the uh, Muslims call Christians. And this is a picture of how uh, it was painted in their houses as, as an alert to the Daesh when they came that they could kill and rape and destroy because they were Christians. And that was painted by their, their Muslim neighbors. 9% of them were not displaced, again, by uh, running bullets. They were displaced by their Muslim neighbors turning on them in Mosul, Tikrit, Karakosh, cities that were uh, uh, mostly uh, operated because of the Christian community. Because the Christian community for more than a millennia has been by far the most educated. You probably have heard that the uh, how uh, how uh, well educated was the Arabic culture that uh, took over Spain and Andalusia and, and uh, Al-Andalus 
and how, how sophisticated they were that they had translated into Arabic the uh, Greek writings of Aristotle and all the other Greek uh, uh, classics before they were translated into Latin. That's true, but it is not, it is not told that that translation from Greek to Arabic was done by Nestorian monks, not by Muslims. Uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the famous uh, caliph Harun al-Rashid, which is famous because of the Arabi Arabian Nights and so forth, he's the one that paid Christians to make the translation. So basically, most of the cultural deposit of that, that the Arabic world is proud of it is about 99% of Christian origin. And because they were the only ones that dominated all these different cultures. And in their cities, in Mosul in particular, they were middle to upper middle class because they were the most learned. And also, Christians are well known for having a, a strong work ethic. When you, you go to the, to the Muslim uh, part, and they, they, I'm not saying this as a disparaging to, to our Muslim brothers. This is the fact, this is what I saw. I got there, I'm a journalist, I'm not, not, not an ideologue, I just got there, I saw what I saw. And the, uh, the difference of vibrancy between the, uh, the, the, the Christian district of Ankara and, uh, and downtown Darbil, uh, next to the mosque, is, uh, is dramatic. In, uh, if you just look at the number of men that should be working, I mean working age, uh, smoking the hookah, all those incredibly complicated smoking devices, uh, as you can imagine, whatever culture developed that device is not thinking about smoking as a practical thing that you can do while, say, working. You know? I mean, try, to, try to work around with a hookah and be productive at the same time. Not in my office, at least. So, Peter, forget the hookah. So, the, uh, I, uh, I, I, find this uh, uh, something that, is, uh, that, that has to be a uh, highlight because it will help us understand some of the concerns that Christians have when, when they, are, they, they are there. So all these Christians that are displaced are living in three uh, general, uh, three different conditions. Uh, one of them is the, the usual camp. Uh, this is a picture of the camp in the hook. The problem with these Christians that are living in this camp is that because they have not been declared by the United Nations as refugees, but they have been declared as IDPs, which stands for internally displaced people, they have no access to a significant help from the international community, at least the secular international community, because an internally displaced people is saying there is um, there is a disaster in, uh, in Nebraska, God forbid, and all that people come here to Denver, the United Nations do not declare those Nebraskans as refugees. They are internally displaced people, and therefore it's a U.S. problem. It's the problem of the nation. So this is how these people have been qualified internally displaced people. So I would say about 80% or 90% of the help they get is from fellow Christians. What we don't do, nobody else can do it, basically. Um, so the, uh, this is another uh, picture. Uh, uh, as you can see, the, uh, some of the tents were the, uh, the, the, the logo of the United Nations uh, Commission for the Refugees. That's as far as that help goes, the tent, period. Or, or in other places in which they are living in empty buildings, in abandoned buildings, they, they receive these uh, large tarps with the same logo so they can, they can uh, somehow insulate the, the, the house from either heat or, or cold. The other group, uh, 
are the ones that have ended up in uh, in Erbil. And this is a map of Erbil. This is actually a map from uh, a realtor in Erbil that sells property in Erbil. So if anybody's interested in a piece of land, just <laughs> again, hook you up with this gentleman. <laughs> uh, if you see, Erbil has this strange uh, circular uh, design. And it is because the uh, uh, 4,000 years before Christ, the, the first city was built and is called today the Citadel. And it was built in the top of a, of a mesa. So that, that that first city was totally round and the walls were round. The city is still there, has been obviously uh, 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 reconstructed many, many times. But that's, that's the, 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 the exact center of, of our wheel. So the rest of our wheel has been growing around this circle. And that, therefore, the, the circle shape of, of the whole city. In here, is, this is where, this is the citadel. And this is the Christian quarter, Ancawa. At the entrance of Ancawa, you have a main road, and there is a Virgin Mary there which is something like uh, incredible to see in, 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 in this uh, cultural context. And it's very close to the airport of Erbil, which is an incredibly modern airport. Uh, the, uh, the, the courts are looking to gain independence, not only autonomy. They want to become a nation, an autonomous nation, so they do everything they can to please the main powers in the world, the Western countries, and as such, their policy of protecting Christians. In, in Ankawa, the, you have the, the refugee camps that have been built in, in church property. In, this is one of those in Mar Elia, Mar in, uh, in Syriac, which is basically a modern Aramaic is uh, means holy uh, and Maria, this will be Saint Elijah the name of this parish with ha which has a, a very large piece of land that piece of land has been used to uh, to put these uh, containers you can see here, these are basically containers that have been welded uh, windows and doors in the side uh, just as some uh, charitable organizations do to build uh, hospitals and give a use to, to those uh, containers. So they basically live in, in uh, that kind of, uh, of containers. Uh, in, uh, 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 in, in a, a very uh, modest situation with you know, the, the usual lack of, uh, of energy, of uh, the lack of uh, uh, of, of uh, water, restrictions of water, in uh, poor living conditions. But these are the happiest people because they are in church property. And uh, so this is how one of those uh, houses uh, look. This is how the camp look uh, in, uh, in, the, in the night when I came after celebrating the, the Holy Thursday, the Supper of the Lord. And this is, uh, this is a grotto that they have built with the first resources that they received, the first cement that they got to build whatever they needed. They built a grotto and they, built, they put these images there. And uh, I mean, the number of images uh, that, that are there are any religious image that is sent to them, they, they put it right there. No, uh, so uh, equal opportunity for all devotions to be there. You know? So there is a, uh, uh, there is a, a divine mercy somewhere here. There is a sacred heart. There is an immaculate heart. So you name it, they put it there. But it's, it's, it's incredibly moving. And the first thing they did was to build this, this grotto. And this is the, the community. Uh, it's celebrating the, the, the Mass at Marelia, very modest uh, church. 
in I I attended the the mass. I was sitting right here, and after I I bother the life of those around me with my video camera or my my my, my camera. <coughs> and after the mass, this gentleman here apologized for being on the way of my work. So he said, no, 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 I, I apologize. No, 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 we apologize. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you win. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is at the inside one of the houses. I, uh, I was with, uh, on, the, on the left hand side, is uh, Father Daniel. You know that name? It's a different Daniel. Uh, in the, I am standing at inside one of these houses, and you see how they try to make the house as as comforting for the for especially for the kids as they can. So they put these stars, these hearts, the the hands have doll there, and I am standing uh, next to uh, Virginia. She is uh, she is the top catechist in 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 this. Uh, in this uh, refugee camp, because the first thing that they have organized there is the church. So they, we, we, we get organized as a church. We get our academies, we get our Sunday school, the teaching of the faith to, to our little kids. That's what we are here for, and that's what who we are, Christians. So that's our number one priority. And uh, the the absolute hero in this place is is a. Father uh, Douglas, uh, he's the pastor of this parish. Uh, in uh, Father Douglas is uh, is an incredible parish. He uh, he had two of his parishes bombed and destroyed in Baghdad. He has uh, three car bomb attempts to kill him. He has he has an. AK-47 bullet in his leg that they can't remove, and well, he he was kidnapped uh, in uh, he was kidnapped for ransom for nine days by uh, by ISIS, and during those days he got his teeth and his arms uh, broken with hammers because he would, and they they would uh, uh, they would torture him with with uh, with cigarettes and uh, in. When other people tell you that story, and you go to Father Douglas, you go say, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." But you know, we uh, we we chose this life. We are the shepherds. You know, we can't leave. But we cannot ask the sheep to leave with the wolves. So, for just a romantic idea to keep the Christians in the Middle East at the cost of their life, no, I'm not going to do that. I will stay. That's my job. But I'm not going to force my my people to stay at the risk of their lives. That's not that's not what the shepherd does. And I I interviewed him and we took this uh, picture with the uh, with the um, uh, with Chaldean cross in, in his hand next to Father Daniel, the one that accompanied earlier in the camp. The others that are uh, that are living in. Uh, Better conditions are the ones that live in uh, in this neighborhood of Osar. What happened is that, like many other places, uh, the Kurdistan had also a major uh, real estate crisis. So, as a consequence of that, you have an, an incredible amount of construction halfway abandoned uh, in. Uh, Right in the middle of nowhere, like in the desert, in which a major intersection is being built. I mean, it's stopped. So if there is a piece of a bridge and a piece of another bridge, there is this huge building, halfway in construction, that says, this is the future Marriott. So when is that going to be finished? Nobody knows, but it's a place in which the Jassidi, the, the, the other small mi religious minority, the Zoroastrians, so the Follow the religion that precedes uh, Christianity, and that are uh, seen by Muslims as as uh, Satan worshippers, uh, because they happen to believe in a deity that is called Shaitan, which is a 
the same term that in, in, in Arabic means the devil. Uh, they uh, they, they uh, suffer even uh, even worse, and uh, they are despised by by the by the Kurdish as well. So they they basically are uh, what they get is whatever Christians share with them. Uh, there is a whole neighborhood that was being built uh, uh, in outside Erbil uh, 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 in this in this area was uh, uh, Osar, and with the money of the aid to the church he needed, the Knights of Columbus, those houses were acquired and they were uh, like half uh, half built, as you can see some of these uh, houses. The reason it was fairly smart, if we let, if we let Christians build the houses, it, they will have jobs and they will have an income at the same time that they are improving their own living conditions. Uh, unfortunately, because of the number of refugees, uh, conditions are not as good as they sound because you have three or four families living in each house. So uh, living conditions are not that good. Obviously, in this uh, in this place, the the heroes are what I what I call. I even wrote an article about the the Slovakian army. Uh, this is uh, Doctor uh, Susana Dudova, uh, Slovakian, and uh, I just cannot pronounce the name of uh, of uh, the, the guy that I call. Pete, I told him, I'm going to call him Pete, because I can't pronounce her name. Okay, Pete is fine. So uh, we hang around for a whole day. And these are doctors from a Catholic university in, uh, in Slovakia that was founded by a leader of the underground church during communism. And this gentleman has founded this, this Catholic university. He's a doctor for a uh, profession with a the uh, professions that are only related to serving people. So they have uh, the uh, uh, medicine, nursing, social work, missionology to prepare missionaries, and uh, those are coming as volunteers to work here, and they have uh, created this clinic, which is uh, Clinic of Saint Zdenka Shilling. They are getting a little bit ahead of themselves. Uh, uh, Zdenka Shilling is uh, um, uh, a martyr of communism, a nun, a nun that was a martyr of communism that was beatified by uh, Pope uh, John Paul II. But they said um, she's going to be kind of nice soon, and we don't have, want to have a sign that is outdated, so. <laughs> You know, we just went ahead and put it, you know, San Zdenka Shilling. And the other mobile clinic in, in, uh, in uh, the Hook, the other place that I show you that is, you know, even worse, um, is called Saint Jersey Popielusko, the, the, the Polish martyr priest that is also beatified, so they are also getting ahead of themselves. Same logic. Listen, we don't want to, we don't have money to change signs, so, you know, we, We'll just put the, the final sign there, church will catch up with our sign. Yeah. So this is the team that works 24-7. Uh, they live nearby, they come and help uh, in, this, uh, in this, one of the houses of this, of, of this uh, uh, neighborhood has, has been assigned for this clinic. And the work that they do inside, the, the picture that I showed you of, of Christine, that little girl that is being helped to see if, they can, if she can be saved. Uh, uh, I mean, her, her, her ability to walk, can be say, is, is uh, done by, is, is inside this, this clinic. In, uh, this is uh, uh, Dr. Dudova in, uh, in one of the uh, semi-built buildings that, that Christians and just cities are occupying uh, temporarily. And this is a picture that I took in, uh, in a clinic that 
is uh, look at all the logos in that uh, in that clinic. And uh, some of them are Catholic organizations, and praise be to God. Some others are secular organizations, like GCP is a Japanese uh, NGO. And this is a brand new, brand new air condition, as you can see out of the air conditioning system, brand new clinic that operates maybe uh, on uh, Saturdays afternoon if they can find a volunteer that can come. This is an example of how, how uh, uh, when, when NGOs who do not have boots on the, on the ground end up putting together something that maybe in paper looks well, but doesn't work. You, know, uh, you probably know the, the saying that a camel is a horse built by a committee. You know? So <laughs> when, uh, when people get together and try to you know, find like quote unquote middle ground, so there is a, a Mennonite charity, Jewish charity, and, and I mean, God bless them all. Absolutely, I mean, you see the logo of the Vatican is there. And also, there is some money from the Pontifical Council of Corun. And I just wanted to take this picture of the irony uh, of, uh, out of which uh, Dr. Dudova and, the, uh, and, uh, and all these, uh, these guys were incredibly good sports about. They are just five blocks away uh, in, uh, from this uh, brand new clinic. There was just not the right kind of coordination to make sure that okay, these have we have these excellent people. Let's make sure that they have the excellent tools. <clears throat> and the uh, the only ones that are doing that, I would say, is is uh, the, uh, the 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 archdiocese of of uh, of uh, the, uh, of Arvide. because it's, it's absolutely stretching every single resource. Uh, in, in the many directions in which they, they, they need to. Uh, here in this uh, picture, I am with a, with a, a, a Christian, uh, the, the one that is next to me. Is, she is uh, Shilan. Uh, she decided to start uh, an NGO with the resources of her family. The rest of her family lives outside of Arville. She's the only one that, that stayed. So his uh, brothers and sisters who are doing well, some of them here in the United States, some others in Europe, send her money to help the, the, the locals. So she, she is a walking Catholic NGO, you know, operates from home, and uh, tries to help the uh, uh, these, these communities, especially in education. Here, we're visiting uh, uh, this, uh, this place, Jasidis. These are not Christians, they are Jasidis. And the only ones that are taking care of the Jasidis are the Christians. Uh, uh, Jasidis uh, are, are uh, polygamy, so uh, you, uh, every time you go to one of these houses, uh, you, you have a, probably 12 to 15 kids in, in one family, because there are two or three wives. So, uh, the, the conditions that where they are living, they are basically uh, temporarily invading these, these abandoned constructions, but whenever construction picks up, and it seems that the economy will recover and it will pick up soon, they are going to be totally displaced with no place to go. Pray for us. It's better to have heart full of faith. It's better to have heart empty. Second, help us. And you know help, that means faith without action. It is just faith. I'm talking about action, and you understand me as a Catholic. Third, save us. Believe me, my brothers and sisters, the Christian in Iraq, we did our part to this country. We are not converted to the Christianity a couple hundred years ago. We are here since the first century we are here. From the first century we have, we have church, and we had that time church named Koche. So we are here because we never been part with any, any parts because we are always belong to Jesus, not to another one. So pray for us, help us, save us. If you have will and power to save my people, 
please don't stop and just open the gate to my people. What's the point to, to let the sheep live among wolves? It's very hard. So this is my message to you. That's Father Douglas. In, I, I wanted to uh, summarize the needs in his own words. Well, uh, uh, so uh, pray for us, uh, help us, save us. Um, in one of the pressing needs that I have seen, and one of the main concerns of uh, of the uh, of, of uh, Christians is is obviously their living conditions, but not so much like education. Uh, uh, Keep in mind what I explained about the, the level of education that Christians have. They, they, they are very aware of the importance of education. They know that they will probably be there for a long time. Nobody knows what is going to happen with Iraq and with the cities that have been invaded and dominated by, by, uh, 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 by the Daesh. The, uh, one of the things that they have been lobbying for in the Father Douglas explained me, and then Archbishop Guarda, the, the Archbishop of Arville explained me, was that they are trying to convince, and they ask Catholics to try to convince their own nations, like our representatives of the US, to lobby the United Nations to declare the, uh, the, the properties of Christians in the cities they come originally from as property of Christians meaning that they have the right to return to their properties and their homes and, uh, and their possessions. Because if, uh, if, what would be the point if you are kicked out from, from, uh, from the Denver urban area and everything is taken away from you and two or three years from now they tell you, you can come back, you know, but just to see how the Muslims are living in your home and, uh, and how they are driving your car and how they are uh, uh, working in the, in the industry that you created, in the, in the industry of, of uh, in olive oil, shoes, have been very, very uh, uh, good and successful in Mosul. Uh, the disappearance of Christians have basically paralyzed the economy of the city. So now, uh, this uh, silly, crazy, people from Daesh can be proud that we control the city, but they control a pile of rubble because the city is paralyzed. They don't know how to run the electricity because all that was done by the intelligence of Christians. And that's why they are, they, they, they are going out, the reason why the, the, the Iraqi, uh, uh, Iraqi army took back decree is because the, Whenever they don't find oil wells working, they can't make a city work. They cannot make an industry work. Only you know, cheap, easy money that comes from oil, and they sell in the black market. That's the, 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 the way they, they, they get the, the, their, their income. So it, they, they, they want to, to lobby a resolution of those terms so that if Christians go back, they have a chance of a future. Well, they get their house back, their industry back, their possessions back as, mu as much as possible. Uh, in this, uh, this is another camp at the uh, Ishtar uh, school. It's a Catholic school who gave uh, the, 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 a piece of land that was empty for future construction to the, the Christian refugees. And they, this is a case in which I saw the, they, uh, separating these two tents uh, for classrooms. They are so concerned about education that they are trying to organize themselves in classrooms. Why? Because uh, the Christians that are coming from, from the rest of Iraq are, uh, do, not, uh, do not speak Kurdish. 
so they cannot be integrated easily into the Kurdish educational system. Is not only the public schools are are overwhelmed, but they, they cannot they, they have been under the 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 uh, Arabic uh, Iraqi educational system. So they don't know how to to get their kids to catch up with their education and don't not, don't lose a school year and make sure that the kids keep progressing in their education. So the, the archdiocese is trying to do as much as they can. They have a plan for a Catholic university. The Catholic university is going to start working half of it as a Catholic university, but the other as a school, so that at least some Christians can go there. But obviously, the, uh, the solutions are far away from uh, to, to, to meet the demand. So uh, this, this, uh, uh, this uh, Christians uh, asked, uh, asked uh, me through, uh, through Sheila, you can see her here in the back, same uh, lady, to help us turn this into a classroom. They already turned this like the kindergarten classroom, and to turn all this area into a, 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 a playground for the, for the kids. Uh, this is uh, the, the area in which they want to, uh, to build that, uh, in which they want to build that, th those classrooms are is, is empty and is uh, unsafe, it's just rock and, uh, and herbs and, uh, and basically uh, nothing, empty ground. In the, uh, nevertheless, the optimism and the resilience of these uh, Christians uh, was summarized to me by uh, Archbishop Bashar uh, Mardi Guarda, the Archbishop of, of uh, Erbil. When, when our people reached our, our churches here, uh, we have received them uh, with, with, with love, but at the same time they gave us also the courage that they, they prefer to leave everything behind and not to leave Christ. Because Daesh gave them three options, uh, Islam or Jizya and stay Christians or leave. So they prefer to leave with nothing than to lose their faith in Christ or to lose their dignity in paying the Jizya. So this would give us, I mean, I feel proud really of, of my people that they're in, in, in this time, uh, in our modern time, there are people who prefer not to lose faith, not to lose their dignity and live with nothing, maybe beggars, than really to leave their, their faith uh, in Christ and uh, their dignity as a human person, as, as a free human person. So. In, 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 I was I, I was interviewed immediately after I I, I arrived here, and I remember uh, when the, the 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 journalist asked me to to summarize my experience with the Christian community, I was really out of words because I I celebrated with them uh, the passion of the Christ, uh, the passion of the Lord. Uh, Good Friday, in the Supper of the Lord, Holy Thursday, and then the Easter Vigil at a, a, a major, large a tent. In I was a, I was moved, and the only thing that I could say when I was asked about my experience of their faith is that they they really believe what they celebrate, and they really celebrate. What they believe, I mean, you could not see people disconnected during the celebration, and this was a tent with six thousand people, and we were way in the back, and there, so th 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 there was very little to see. Unlike the the the, the, uh, the uh, Western uh, liturgy, which is very rich in movement and symbols. Uh, 
the, the Chaldean uh, liturgy is, is very static, if you will. It's, it's a lot of what is happening in the altar and is being said uh, in, uh, in Aramaic, the, 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 the language of, of Jesus. So when they consecrate, they consecrate with the words of Jesus, literally, the, the same Aramaic. And uh, the, uh, the, the, the level of tension and attention of the people especially for the long periods of time in which you are standing because they, they don't have kneeling position. They are only have standing and sitting. And the whole liturgy of the Eucharist, obviously because of the dignity, has to be standing. And uh, the, the level of connection of the, of the people with the mystery was incredible. I mean, you could not see people yawning or distracted or watching their watches. They were truly celebrating their faith. They, they were really uh, uh, doing what we are supposed to do in the liturgy, which is you know, celebrate what we believe and believe what we celebrate. I, I finally understood the meaning of that when I saw them celebrating their faith. So, uh, we are, uh, 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 with the Catholic News Agency and my community are uh, trying to to help a couple of uh, these uh, small projects uh, with uh, the Jersey Pope Lutzko Clinic and uh, the uh, Ishtar School. And uh, we have established uh, an account for uh, those who would like to help somehow. I just want to uh, remind you of the, uh, of the, 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 the wonderful uh, words of uh, Father Douglas. You know? uh, uh, faith with action. And as Catholics, you know what I mean. Okay, so the only missing thing was doing this. Okay. <laughs> you, as a Catholic, you know what I mean. That's you know, the elegant, erratic style to say charity. We need a charity. And I honestly believe, honest to God, uh, that we own them because they are the suffering part of the church. The, the level of hostility they leave, the, the, the level of uncertainty they leave because of their faith, that's enriching us because of the communion of the saints, because we're one church. So we are in debt with them. And they have an ongoing need. And therefore, it's an ongoing responsibility for us to help them as much as we can. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, I will be very happy to address them.